that's what it really sparked off for me for more sharing skin care. And from a guy, it's very different. And I just thought, what can I do <laughs> to really just keep the creation going, really? Because I'm quite a creative person in that way. Right, all good? Right, all good? Yeah. Cool. Who are you? <clears throat> I am Scott McGlynn, actor, online creator and podcaster. Lovely. So what do you do? Um, so I act mm -hmm. and then I do uh, online creating. So I do like a lot of skin videos online. I've got a couple of shows online on Instagram mainly. And then I do podcasting as well. No, sure. So what have you acted in recently? I've done a couple of like short films in Manchester and then I've done a BBC, I've done a very small, very small role in the B a new BBC film coming out, hopefully 2022. So yeah, excited to see that. So how was it moving into TV? Um, it was, I think for me, a lot of people ask me this one because I think because I'm used to the camera right. because that's my job. Sure. Like I speak to the camera and I use a lot of it um, in my job anyway online. Mm -hmm and going live. So it's, for me, it's quite just a normal thing. So when I come like on set, a lot of people get nervous just on the camera side. But yeah, for me, I'm like just loving it. Nice. So why <laughs> did you move into acting? Do you know, I think over my career, I think I've interviewed so many people in that industry, a lot like Hollywood, the UK, Australia, and it's something that's very interesting to me. And a lot of people said, why haven't you done it? This, and I was like, I don't know. And um, and I've got a lot of actors, active friends now. So when that come all about, I asked advice and I just connected with the right people and I just went for it. And um, I'm loving it. Nice, nice. So yeah. who's your idol as an actor? Ian McKellen, I always say, is like a cool guy. Right. I think the first time I ever saw him was like in, in X-Men, 2002, like 2000. And that was like superhero films, like my thing. So when I saw him for the first time there, then I really like looked into his career and what he's done. And then he just went on screen a lot more since then. But yeah, I think he's just a really cool guy. Done a lot, stands for a lot as well, which is quite important to me. So yeah, I think he's just an incredible guy and love him. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> no, he's fantastic. Watkins and Gunn solicitors are there for you. We are a law firm that champions jargon-free legal advice with innovative solutions that work for you. Share your legal problem with us and our friendly and approachable lawyers will use their expert and award-winning advice to help you solve your legal problems and get things done. Watkins and Gunn. Problem solved. So what's the best part about what you do? I think every day is different. Mm -hmm. So um, like a creator side of things, I just don't know what's gonna come in my emails um, asking for something to be created. So I think that's exciting to me. Like never the same day is the same. Sure. And same with acting as well. You just don't know what script you're gonna read and what audition's coming up and just getting like to a character's, you know, certain mind sure, frame. Sure. Um, yeah, and then with the guests, like for my shows, like everyone's different, so. Yeah, yeah, that's quite exciting to just really read them and see what comes out of it. No, absolutely. <laughs> so it all sounds like it's going great. So what have been some of the challenges of getting here? Uh, for me personally, I'm yeah. not like a technical, like a tech person. It's like editing was like very a long process for me to really learn because I've never done it. I never study it. Sure. So I l watched a lot of YouTube videos watching this, like how to edit this and that. And I'm still not the best, but I think that was a big challenge for me just from that side of things, as, as a creator, you want to kind of get it eye catching. And it took me a while to get there. I think I've got it, ish. <laughs> um, so that's a big, that was a big challenge for me because like, you know, not everyone can edit, but we got there. And um, yeah, and I think every day is a new challenge for me. Like every job is a challenge for me. True. So I always, you know, never think, if that's a social media job, you know, it's a client to me, so sure. I've got to make sure they're happy. Like, it's so many times I've done jobs and I had to reshoot the whole thing when they're just not happy. I think one job I did, and it was like six times reshoot. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> um, 
But that's like a challenge, but obviously, you know, we've got to do what we've got to do. And no, sure. that's my job and you've got to have fun with it, right? Sure. So what about personal challenges? Um, I think just from, from my backstory, a lot, of, a lot of people might know this from online, but I've been very open about where I've come from, what I've struggled with. So for me, it took me a very long time to find who I was and where, I've, and where I am now. Like it's been a journey. So um, I didn't really find who I was, who, like, who Scott McLean was when I was like in my 20s. Okay. Um, when I was really getting comfortable who I was, great group of friends and then just felt like I could just be open with them and that's how I've come about. Um, I never used to talk, ever. Right. For a good chunk of my life. So um, now that I don't shut up talking, it's a big <laughs> difference. So yeah, that was a big thing for me, just finding myself and who I am as a person. I think that's the big challenge I've come across, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So can you talk a little bit about um, bullying in school? Yeah, so um, for me, it was a very strange one because in primary school, I was not popular, but we'd like just all got on. We all, it was just a great class. Um, and then what happened was my mum took me out of, because when we moved to the primary, we got then automatically moved to the secondary school, high school. That's, and then we all followed, but my mum took me out of that and put me in a different school. So I was very, on my own starting this school like for the first time. Um, now, didn't know anyone. And obviously people who come in, it was in that school already knew each other. So they already had those clicks. And so me coming into it, um, you know, I was, well, I was like age like 11, 12. So it was very young. And yeah, just, it wasn't the best experience of my life. Five years of my life, I think. It was, um, yeah, challenging. I su suffered from depression and anxiety from just that journey. Um, just from a bullying side of things, from a sexuality and how I looked. So I had kind of two going on there. So talking about bullying, so what specifically were people bullying, bullying you for? Um, how I looked okay. was one thing because I suffer from acne, um, still do, I think to this day, uh, just one of those. People could say I got the Celtic skin because my mum's Scottish, <laughs> my dad's Welsh, I got Irish, and his family's all from Ireland, so it's like all mixture of this. I've just got that skin, you know. And, sure. um, but yeah, it's it, that was definitely one of them, and my sexuality was the one. And I remember people always saying so in words to me, and I really didn't know what they meant right. at all. You know, because I was like I think 11, 12, you're really uh, quite young mm -hmm. at that age. And that's when it first started, like within the first week. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle there for me for that one. Yeah. Yeah. How did you overcome that? Um, I didn't, I definitely wasn't in school. I think when I started to find who I was um, and it took me that long to find yeah. and feel comfortable in myself, that's when I kind of got over it and then when I was in my late 20s that's when I come out with uh, my story and how and share with people what I went through and hopefully that was going to help others yeah so is know. that how you overcame it sharing your story and is that what it was kind of yeah I think I had to find myself first I think right. I needed that I needed to know and feel comfortable talking about it you know yeah. because a lot of people don't and I was quite lucky to have my family support me all the way. Um, and, and and I think without that, I wouldn't have done it. And now that, now, since then, since sharing it, like nearly 10 years ago, nearly. Not, you know, not nearly 10, you know, about eight years ago. Yeah. You know, it's been a great journey and I think I've helped a lot of people on the way and that's why I keep doing what I'm doing. So why did you start posting unfiltered pictures on social media? To get away with this, like, so the stereotype of Instagram, I hate it. Um, and, and for me, like, because I come up with my skin story, because I work with big brands, like I was a Neutrogena ambassador for like a whole year. And I, that's what it really sparked off for me for more sharing skin care. And from a guy, it's very different. So then, and from a guy having like acne prone skin as well, that was different again. So it's not different because I know guys who has acne, but just the position I was in, I was just, just a great time to share. And yeah, you know, and I just wanted to show the people that this is life. 
you know, it's, this is real, it's reality. I'm not on a beach somewhere always like in a bathing suit, like I'm not, that's not me. <laughs> uh, you know, which a lot of people do that, you know, sure. and um, I've learned a couple of things along the way that it's just all fake. Mm. But that's, but I just wanted to bring that to the today. And um, since doing that, I found a lot of people like just doing the same thing, which is absolutely incredible. I think that's what it should be. Um, so yeah, if you definitely might see a photo or a story of me in the pouring rain, looking dreadful with my dogs, like this. But that's yeah. life for you, you know? Yeah. Do you think that's done a lot of good sharing those kind of things? Yeah. And I hopefully this is now coming for like, cause Instagram for like the youngsters, so to speak. Hopefully that would just like spark that film a bit and just say like, this is like share. Don't put like 50,000 filters on. Like airbrush your face so it's so noticeable that it's just so fake. Yeah, and it never um, ends, does it? It'll just carry on and on and on. Yeah, exactly. And I think for brands wanting to work with me, I think because they see that, yeah, it's real, it's not fake, you know, and that's how I get so many jobs in a way. <laughs> in a way. Um, <laughs> not so many jobs, but you know, people come and they want to work with me because I'm so real in that sense. So would you say people are becoming more socially aware? Yes and no. Okay. I think if if you don't read or physically go looking for something, it's not really out there, okay. if that makes sense. So when I do my articles in the media and people who follow me that over the time sees the new articles written, like they're intrigued, they want to know, like obviously something new and they just want to want to know more. So that's different, but like I think publicly no. I don't think so. Okay. Not really. Um, unless that like, you follow. So like, you have to go looking for it, really. Yeah. Or, or you know, if you already follow a like media outlets, like online or something, you know, like Gay Times of Attitude and, and different ones like that, that you will get always updates. Sure. Obviously, what's new, what's happening, what's in that kind of in the community of that sense. So, sure. but other than that, no. Okay. So do you think we're moving in the right direction though? Slowly. Okay. Yeah, it's just, I always feel like when I read something, it's something new every day. It's sure. always something. Um, and sometimes I think some of it's positive, some of it's negative, you know, and it's, and it's very mixed emotions. You know, if you really get, if you really sit there and read an article, you can really get you emotional yeah. um, on some of them. And, and I think it's important to share stories and get it out there. Why did you start your podcast? Um, so, uh, 2016, I wrote a book, and that was my coming out um, bullying in school, and just like my life really, up to when I was, before I was 30. So I was like, okay. Uh, so that came out, and I had great response, went on a bit of a book tour, and then um, I just wanted to do more with it. I thought it was quite strong, I thought the response was great, and I just thought, what can I do? <laughs> to really just keep the creation going really, because I'm quite a creative person in that way. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then celebrities were like a big thing for me. And I think, um, cause I had a couple of friends in the industries and different, in different from different shows and things. So I thought, right, okay. So I thought, let's put that and night like, coming out and, and just talking about their life. Because what I thought, if you see them like on TV or maybe a radio station, they don't really talk about that topic is sense of like they may be going off to promote something sure. or what have you. So I thought let's bring this platform and just, just talk and just say about the coming out careers. And I've learned so much. And that was one thing about the acting industry. I learned so much on how it worked and how I interviewed actors sure. who's openly gay now, yeah. but weren't when their career was at the hype. Right. Because they got told not to. Sure. Um, and it was just very interesting to me and I just don't stop talking, that was the problem. <laughs> so for me it was like, and I'm very interested to know people's lives and um, yeah. I think it's like over like a hundred episodes and I, it's very interesting to me like every single story is different. Sure. It could be like a gay actor in living in Hollywood, like it could be like two different, two different people and they've got the completely different story of all of it, you know, it's never the same. Sure. Um, and I like that. Yeah.